So the project I'm going to talk about is the Rosenwald School that was designed for Hampton uh, Institute, uh, which was a teaching school, uh, an industrial training school in the Tidewater region of Hampton, Virginia. It was a project that exists in very few um, objects within the archive. So the primary thing that we have that represents the project is this um, rendering uh, perspective that gives us a sense of what it would have looked like had it been built. When I first discovered and heard about this project, I knew what the Rosenwald Fund was, but I didn't know what the Rosenwald Fund school program was. It started in uh, 1917 and ended about uh, 1938, somewhere around then. Um, but over that period, they built over 5,000 schools for African-American students, primarily in the South. Um, and what was fascinating about uh, the Rosenwald Fund in general was that uh, it was money given by Julius Rosenwald, who was a philanthropist. He was Jewish, in, based in Chicago. Um, and the money has provided a number of things beyond the school program, but he funded artists and intellectuals and writers. So people like Marian Anderson, the singer, Ralph Ellison, the novelist, Jacob Lawrence, who did the migration series. But a large part of that fund also gave monies for school construction. In terms of the Rosenwald Fund, Booker T. Washington started the fund, um, and it continued really and grew at Tuskegee Institute. Washington had this idea that if African American communities could get some monies, part of the money would come from Julius Rosenwald, he would donate a third, the communities would raise one third, and local school boards would raise a third of the funds that the quality um, of the spaces of education could be improved across the South. And so when you see the map of the school building program, you realize the extent to which uh, these schools provided a service that unfortunately under Jim Crow segregation was not being provided. And the fact that African Americans had to provide their own monies, even though they paid taxes in many of these municipalities and to the state, you know, showed the impact of Jim Crow segregation on education. So the original plan that Frank Lloyd Wright receives from the Rosenwald Fund is a building that is a U-shape with an auditorium uh, in the front of that U-shape. Uh, and then you could see in um, the perspective that it's, it's more of a donut. And what Wright does is he takes the auditorium and pushes it to the back. So by pushing it to the back, it opens up an area that he describes as a patio and pool. And this provides a place for children to play, to swim, and this ties into his own experience in designing buildings, school buildings, playhouses, field houses for his clients, his previous clients in, Chicago, in the Chicago area and in Wisconsin. I think one of the interesting aspects that I found about the project is that Wright had very progressive ideas about education and it took projects that he had done for his white clients, fairly wealthy white clients, and was willing to adopt those ideas for African American students. But on the other hand, when you start to read some of how Wright describes the project, and particularly the way in which he characterizes African Americans as being childlike, um, enjoying music and dance, bright colors, he makes a reference to darkies, there's a sensibility about Wright that also starts to allow for kind of cultural hierarchies that are certainly a part of that time and could, could be understood as being, you know, sort of part of the rationale about how civilization would advance, which was often talked about as white civilization without necessarily describing it. I think it's an important project because it's one of the projects that doesn't have a big footprint in the archive. I mean, the archive is immense and enormous. And this is a project that has very little evidence. What was fascinating was how it touched so many other archives, the Rosenwald Fund archives, Fisk University archives, where the Rosenwald Fund papers are being held. And so it, to me, showed how Wright was interacting with a lot of major figures and institutions of the day that were engaged in uh, progressive education and reform.